chapter 2, Exodus the second chapter. I've had this Bible here so long. This is one of my favorite Bibles, the New International Version, Thompson Chain. I flip back to Exodus 2. It's, I'm in Genesis 50 to Exodus 4. Exodus 2 is gone. I don't know which one of my children stole it. But this Bible been beat up. Every now and then you flip through your Bible and there's some pages missing. So Exodus chapter 2. Good to have all of you here. Mom, I want to talk to you this morning. And not only that, I do know that there are single dads in the house that are raising up their kids. So Mother's Day, Father's Day, often difficult days. I know that. I will talk to my mom. Many of you wish you could talk to your mom. Uh, I know that. It's, uh, it's not so much that you had children as much as you understand you had a mother. That's what today is about for me to, under, to, to look back on and, and thank God for. And, uh, there's, no, there's no manual on how to do it. But God put instinct inside every mother here to, uh, to do, to protect, to influence. And today I want to talk to you that your influence does matter. You have to believe in your influence. You, there are times you, I, I promise you, you're going to look at your kids and say, what did I do wrong? Where did I mess up? How did this get this way? And I, and I say that to every parent in the house. And you have to believe that during the time that they were with you, that you had influence. And somehow that influence is going to come back around. In other words, you're going to see the good come back. Can I get an amen? You gotta, that's believing. That's faith. I got to believe that, you know, I've got five kids now that I've been over. And I've got a lot of kids that look up, at me, up to me and I say, Lord, I've got to believe that somehow it's going to come back around. And I've had kids that were in my youth group from years ago that still have that, uh, you know, you had those influence. And when you've had influence in somebody's life, you've got to believe somehow good it's going to come back around and it's going to be a blessing to you. You know, Mona Lisa's mother said to her, after all the money your father and I spent on braces. <laughs> Mona, that's the biggest smile you can give us. Humpty Dumpty's mother said, Humpty, if I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times not to sit on the wall. But would you listen to me? No. <laughs> Michelangelo's mother said, Mike, can't you paint on walls like other children? Do you have any idea how hard it is to get that stuff off the ceiling? <laughs> Batman's mother said to him, it's a nice car, Bruce. But do you realize how much the insurance is going to be? <laughs> Albert Einstein's mom said to him, Albert. It's your senior picture. Can't you do something about your hair? <laughs> Jonah's mother said, that's a very nice story, son, but now tell me the truth. Where you been for the last three days? <laughs> Exodus chapter 2, are you comfortable? And if you can, would you stand? Exodus the second chapter, verse 1. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child. What scripture talks about when she realized how. And by the way, parents, be honest here. Moms, you know this. Uh, there are times you have a kid and you look at him and you say, this kid going to be something. You just know it. And that's how she felt. Now, this is a mother of Miriam and uh, Aaron. Now, she had two other kids. But in this passage, she knew this boy going to be something. And there are times you believe that. When you see it when they're born. And then you, then you find out later on there's a wanted poster. <laughs> huh? Moses had a wanted poster on him later. And that mama had to believe. Now, I still believe he's going to be a fine child. Amen? You got to believe beyond all the things that you've seen in that. But uh, the scripture said when she saw he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him. And coated it with tar and pitch, and she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds among the, the bank of the Nile. Now, if you just started reading here, you'd miss the whole, the whole story. The, the Israelites were in servitude to the Egyptians. They were growing so fast, and they, they multiplied by children, having children. And the Scripture spoke of them as being strong. The women were strong women. And, uh, and they began to get, and so they put pressure on them and they gave permission. Pharaoh told the midwives, you go out there and you get to them women before they had them babies. And when, if they have a boy, you kill that boy. You make sure all them little boys are dead and let the girls live because they're becoming too strong. They'll take over uh, all of Egypt. And the midwives would rush out there real quick to the pregnant women. And before they could get to them, them women done dropped them babies and hit them before the midwives got there. 
So now, now we got an issue that when they came back to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, well, that's it. I'm going to put an edict out, a command out, a, a, um, a law out that any boy born is going to die. So now he made it where all even the soldiers could come in and kill the children. So now they got to hide the babies. And so she hid this mama, Jochebed. Everybody say Jochebed. Jochebed, she hid him in a basket and put him in the crocodile-infested Nile River. Mama, that's a tough thing. His sister, which would be Miriam, stood at a distance to see what would happen to baby brother. When Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the riverbank, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying. She felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Huh. Everybody see God in all this? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby, nurse him for me, and I will pay you. Well, hold on a minute. You mean I had the baby, hit the baby, I get the baby back, and you're going to pay me to nurse the baby? God, you good. <laughs> so the woman took the baby and nursed him. Then the child grew older. She took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. In other words, she adopted her son out. She released the child to Pharaoh. Father, I thank you for the word. I thank you for the motions that are swirling around today. I thank you, Lord, that we embrace them. Good, bad, ugly, we embrace them. We understand, God, what a blessing it has been to have a mama that would protect, influence, and give a heritage like this woman did. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. The little boy's name was Moses. Moses was a great man. He's a giver of the law. His name means drawn out. No, listen, later the Egyptian tradition would have been drawn out by God. In other words, uh, he was a prince. He was a man of faith. He was a man of miracles. He was a great leader. He was called the meekest man on earth. I mentioned on the midweek services, he man with a stuttering problem, had a brother that would speak for him, and yet he stood up for the things of God. The scripture says he was a prophet in Deuteronomy chapter 18. And if you look at types of Christ, he would be like a type of Christ, a deliverer, one that could pull you out. Before he was all that, though, he was a, a plan in the heart of God. Before you got here, you were a plan in the heart of God. He was a fetus in the womb of his mother. Don't let the word fetus mess you up. The word actually means little one in Latin. Amen. That's who he was. He was an infant in the hands of a protector. He was a child under the guidance of a visionary. He was potentially a lost child in the land of idolatry and Egyptian influence. His mother, Jacobin. What kind of mama was she? She loved life. She was a woman of faith. She trusted God to watch over Moses. She kept him for three months without them knowing she was around. Mama, do you remember how loud that baby would cry? Do you remember the noise a two, three-month-old could do? The wild, when they get, you just couldn't shut them up as hard as you tried. She had this way of keeping that baby quiet. But after three months, she couldn't shut him up no more. She put that little baby in a little, little basket and pushed him off in there. That's a tough thing to do. She raised three famous and successful children. She was a mom of tremendous influence. Mom, again, you got to believe in your influence. Miriam, she had a daughter named Miriam. Miriam, great dancer, singer, praiser. Again, I, I look at JJ at times when I watch her up here dancing. That's that kind of spirit. Some, some little... You know, spirit gets on little girls like that. Dance, dance, dance. Let them dance. Just be careful how short your toot toot gets. Aaron, Aaron was the father of Levites. He loved worship. He loved worship. That's what his life was about. And Moses, of course, was the giver of the law. The traits of a mother, she had influence. First, she handed down an, a heritage to them. Now, a man of the house, Levi, married a Levite woman. I've said this, guys, for many years. Many times people try to try to shift, and I had to uh, embrace my heritage. H, I had to look at it. I found a whole cemetery with Hovatters in it. It was just a whole, it was called Hovatter Cemetery. I went there and looked at it. I, I found a, a, a Confederate uh, uh, infantry man back in the, uh, the, during the uh, Civil War. Hovatter, Rufus was his name. You don't many meet many Rufuses anymore, but I had to look at that and see, okay, this is where I came from. My family, of course, were bootleggers. I had to look at it and say, okay, this is where I came from. Let me embrace this, but it, don't let, it doesn't have to change who I am. Amen. You, you, listen, don't, don't act like because you were born in a certain place, you all that. That was God's way of doing that for you. 
Amen. So look at it and stay humble about it. Jochebed and her husband, Aram, were Levites. Those who offered up praise. They had a spiritual heritage that was worth more than all the wealth and the power of Egypt. Let me mention to you the fact that these people were in slavery and yet they could still worship. There are times in your own life you feel like you're in bondage, addictions and problems and things that happen during the week. And you come to church and you say, well, I can't do anything about it. Break loose from it and still worship. Break loose and believe God for, for deliverance. Can I get an amen? Come on, give me a good amen. you got to break loose from it. You, you can't just sit back and go, well, I'm just in, I, I'll go to church. Come on, I don't want to go to church. When you get here, yeah, loose yourself and realize, you know what? The, even the, the, the uh, Israelites were in bondage. They had to work all this time. But when they had a break, they worshiped. They aren't remembered who they came from. Mom, you too have a spiritual legacy to pass down. You may not have riches or prestige or, or position. But you can hand down your knowledge of God and love for Jesus. And listen, guys, it's not what we leave to our kids that's so important. It's what we leave in our kids. You know, and I, I dwell on this thought over and over because I've been somebody that's been trying to leave my kids' heritage, trying to leave them some, something behind before I go. In other words, I don't want them fighting over an inheritance later, so I've been divvying it up now. The bottom line is this. It's not what I leave to them. That's going to rust. That's going to decay. That's going to go away. But it's what I leave in them. If I can put something in them that will give them, even when I'm long gone, they can remember and look back over it. It's what you hand down to your, to your children. The ability to be, mom, a good wife, a mom, a good woman. Amen. Those things we hand down. You know, this woman, Jochebed, I know a little bit about civil disobedience. Rocky, I know just a little. I know this much. When I see a law, I don't care where that law comes from that breaks the law of this book. I have the right as a believer in Christ to break that law. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Not trying to get you in trouble too. But I'm just, when I see something, the law of life is always greater than the law of the land. The law of life says... That if an ambulance is carrying somebody who was dying and the light turns red, the law of life is greater than the law of the land. And you, that ambulance driver has the right to run that light and get that person to the hospital. That officer has the right to break the law of the land in order to save the law of life. And yet we sit back realizing that oh, we can't do that. Yes, you can. Jochebed had a moment. They're going to infanticide. They're going to kill her baby unless she does something with it. So she breaks the law of the land. She keeps that baby for three months. And then after that, she puts it in a basket. I know she had to pray, oh God. God of the Hebrews, take care of this baby. Keep the crocodiles from, keep the floodwaters from happening. And next thing she knows, he's being drawn out, which tells me God's got his eye on you. There are times in life, it doesn't matter what life and hell throws at you, God's got his hand on you. He said, I'm going to get you to where I need you because I need a deliverer. I need somebody that's going to help somebody out here. So she defies danger. When she became pregnant, she gave birth. She kept him for months there. Exodus tells us in chapter 1 verse 20, God was pleased with the midwives, the people continue to increase in number of very strong people. And because the midwives honored God, God gave them families of their own. There's something about this honoring God. Honoring him and watch him bless you with families. Just stay faithful, be obedient, and watch what God happens. All through the scripture, I'm going to say this until the day I die. God opens wombs over and over and over again when we honor him. Now, don't beat yourself up. You say, well, Pastor, I, I, I'm doing the best I can to honor him. Nothing's happened yet. Stay at it. Keep believing. Yeah, and it may not be your womb. He may open your pocketbook and you may adopt a child. Or you may be a guardian over a child in this house that's looking for a parental figure. Whew. I've heard so many people tell me, Pastor, had it not been for Sister Mary praying for me and loving me every time I came to church, I don't know where I'd be. I'm just making up Sister Mary, but y'all, some of y'all know I had a Sister Mary in this house. Ran a clothing ministry. She was that way. She was everybody's mama. There's times God will bring you up in this house. Every time you come to church, you say, I ain't got no kids, but I know I got some in the house. Amen. I can be a mama over them. I can love those kids there. And don't think for a moment your influence won't matter. It matters. The biggest blessing about all that is you ain't got to feed them later. Amen. Amen. 
Moses' life was threatened by the government even before he was born. There are countless dangers a mother has to oppose to protect her children from the risk of abuse, molestation, exploitation, the neglect, temptation, substance abuse, gang violence. And a mom's work, my friend, is cut out for them for protecting their kids. Mama bear, whoo. I've seen some of y'all post stuff. I hope you as bad in, the, in, in real life as you are in, in, in social media. <laughs> you mess with my babies, I'm going to come over there and do that, 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 that. Listen to me. You ain't even got to say that. When you mess with the cubs, mama bear coming out. She can't help herself. She going to protect she going to look after. She nurtures a nature. Verse 9 says, Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby, nurse him for me. I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. Now, I, I, I know just a little bit. I can tell you this. There's something about the nursing, the connection that, uh, of the mother and the child that affects that child through life. I know some don't want to nurse and that. Come on. God didn't give you them just for all of us to look at. God gave you them to nurse them children with. Amen. I mean, don't, don't get all, I'll get all out of shape. You had the baby, you already out of shape. I know I'm stepping on a little bit here. Maybe where I, ain't, I ain't trotted in a while, but I'm getting old enough. I, I'll be dead soon and it won't matter, so I'll just go ahead and say it. Nurse that baby. Love that baby. Coddle that baby. Look after that baby. That's a powerful thing to get to do. Amen. And so she had that baby for those months. Those months she poured into that child. Well, that child ain't going to remember. That ain't the point. The point is maybe that child will. So you just keep telling that kid how wonderful you will deliver. Moses, you wouldn't believe that I gave you up and God gave you back. Amen. I let you. Not only that God gave me back, he paid me to take care of you. Uh-huh. Here, yeah, let's switch, baby. Come on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You, you, if you just keep talking to him and loving on that baby and take care of that baby and nurturing that baby. I know I'm getting a little, uh, exp never mind. Y'all watch TV and see stuff worse than this church. Come on, y'all quit. <laughs> Mary and Moses' sister offered to find a nurse for Pharaoh's daughter to look after the infant boy found floating in a basket on the river. Now, the nurse, of course, was Moses' own mother, Jochebed. Not just physical nourishment alone in there. She began to pray over that child, love on that child. Exodus chapter 2, verse 11 says, Time passed. Moses grew up. One day he went and he saw his brother, saw all the hard labor they were going through. When he saw an Egyptian hit a Hebrew, one of his relatives, he looked this way. Then he looked that way. Then he realized that there was no one in sight. He killed the Egyptian and buried him in the sand. Mom, the destiny of your children will be determined by their character. Yeah, I, maybe somebody say it was wrong for him to do that. I believe he was defended. Not only his faith, he was defending his brothers. He was doing what was right. It's okay to defend yourself. It's okay to defend other people. And at that moment, of course, he buried the Egyptian. When that happened, you know, there was something molded in the heart of this young man to be a defender, to be a deliverer. They may make mistakes in life. Your kid may make mistakes in life. They may fail at times in life. They may end up in jail at times in life. But mama, your influence, you've got to keep believing God that your influence is going to come back on that kid. That one way or another, they're going to come back around. They're going to live long enough to realize the importance of what you did in their lives. Yeah. Amen. i got to keep believing that. i got to keep giving you hope. Because some of you say, well, I just give up on my kid. Don't give up on them. You nurtured them. You raised them up. You cared for them. My goodness, you paid so much in your life for that child. Believe God, that kid's going to come back around. Amen? I've seen it happen. I've seen the kid come back and apologize. Mama, I'm going to tell you, she suffers a sacrifice. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter. She became her son. I've been the recipient of three wonderful children that God blessed me with through adoption. You know that. You know also I was arrested three times for protesting against abortion. I, I don't know what happens. You know, I was arrested three times. I got three kids. Thank God I wasn't arrested more than three. <laughs> Serve time, all that. You know, I mean, that, it's just what part of, uh, of my life. But I look at it, and of course, I mentioned Sunday about the floodgates. And I, got, I guess I got to be careful. But hear me. Our kids are our privilege. They're not our possessions. You have that child, there are times that child will leave you earlier than you ever thought. And sometimes it looks like that child will never leave you. Either way, they are your privilege. You, had a, they, you don't own them. 
God take it. They're, they're his kids. That's why we dedicate them over to him. Even at a young age, Moses' mom re- released him into God's grand design. We don't know what she's watching from the, from the sides as she's reviewing or, 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 or checking out in his Facebook. We don't know what she's doing to stay in, uh, in connection with him. But in order to be a deliverer of the Jews from Egypt, this was the route God prescribed for Moses to go. Without her sacrifice, there would have been no deliverance for God's people. Mom, you don't know what you're training up. A deliverer? A messenger, a servant for the king. Some moms have their children, have to give them up for adoption because it's best for the child. Some moms sacrifice careers or their dream for freedom for their child. Some, some moms, I know, that they didn't go do all the things they wanted to do. They, they said, you know what, I got these kids. I got to take care of these kids. These kids are my, now my purpose in this life. I got to take care of them. It may be a small privilege you've given up, like a full night's sleep, a hot meal, or the luxury of time alone. You know, somebody said, before kids, Pastor, I had a bucket list. Uh-huh. I, I'm on my bucket list. I'm going to climb a volcano. I'm going to learn French. I'm going to swim with the whales. I'm going to hike the Appalachian Trail. I was going to ride a camel. I'm going to run a marathon. Pastor, after kids, I sleep five hours. I go to the bath. She, this is what she said she wished she could. I wish I could sleep five hours. I wish I could go to the bathroom alone. Uh-huh. I, I, I wish I could hear myself think. I wish I could still wear non-stretchy britches. <laughs> I wish I could drink my coffee hot. I wish I could eat without interruptions. Well, that's what you give up when you get them kids. And for some moms, the sacrifice may have been working extra hours to put a daughter or a son through college or depleting the family savings to provide medical care for them whenever they've been sick. <clears throat> Let me start closing here. Mom... In my heart of hearts, I believe you will reap a reward. It's going to come back to you. And the problem, I, you know, the thing is, be honest, Mom, they grow too fast. I mean, we see them, they just get big quick. It's like they hit a certain age, and, and then they're, they're gone. I have, thank God for pictures. Thank God for, I look at some pictures, I go, and especially like my boys, I go, you, you weren't that bad. Look at you then. Yeah, you were sweet. Cuddly? <laughs> I don't even want to look at you now. I just want to look at you then. Remind myself. She reaps a reward. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Jochebed's son became one of the greatest men who ever lived. Her reward was to know she had played a part in his choice to follow the hard road. There's less traffic on the hard road. A lot of folk don't like the hard road. It's the road less taken. Hebrews 11 tells us of Moses. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You know, if I take on that prestige of being Pharaoh's daughter, I have all the uh, accolades of a kingdom. Think of what goes on in England now. If you are connected to the lineage, you are already a millionaire. Moses said, don't want it. I don't want that connection. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. When Scripture says for a season, sin often only lasts for a season. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. There's something about looking ahead. Our kids may not achieve the degree of greatness as a Moses, but they can be used of God. I have to keep believing that. Mom, you got to keep believing that. What a gift to give mom. But to have a heart toward God. Some of you came here today to be with mama. Thank you. You, that's That's a great step. This nation needs productive members in the house of God. Loving spouses and repeating the traits handed down to them. A heritage. Defying danger. Nurturing a nature. Sacrificing and reaping reward. The scripture says, Your children shall rise and call her blessed. You ought to call mama today and say, I just want to say blessed. Mama, you blessed. I know you're too. They say, because you had me. Amen. You know, I, I made you mama. So don't forget that. When you're mad at me, mama, don't forget. I'm the reason you're mama. That's kind of reverse psychology, isn't it? <laughs> kind of got to help remind her of that moment. 
Oh, mom, believe in your influence. Believe in your influence. Heads bowed just for a moment. Sister Lord, if you'd prepare a couple of them. Father, I thank you for the moms in this house. I thank you for the ones set next to them. Nobody really in America is without excuse. We've heard the gospel. We understand it. If there's one verse we all need to grasp, honor your father and your mother on this earth and you'll live long. God, let honor be a part of how we feel about our parents. God, not, not, not the fact that their position or what they did or maybe we're angry and mad or this, that, or the other, but help us just to honor. And if we can't say anything good, let us not say anything at all. But God, we want to honor you. We want to honor our mamas. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Mama, it's been our tradition in this church to give every mother a rose. Every mother-to-be a rose. If you believe that you're mama, then we want you to have a rose. So this is what we'd like. Ladies, if I get two of you over here. Y'all need some help there? I'd like for the moms in the house over here to get up if you would. Come right down this aisle. If you're unable, look at the one next to you and say, go get my rose. Amen. On this side also, come on up here, mama. Let's make our way around. Let mama out. You got to let mama out. Let her out. 